this explain everything is going to take a look at the Wiggers diagram, looking at the cardiac cycle, all the phases of the cardiac cycle, and what's occurring in time at each phase. We'll take a look at the electrical activity that's going on in the heart, the mechanical contractions, what's happening to the pressure, what's happening to the valves, what heart sounds are you hearing, what volume changes are there in the ventricle, and we will try to pull it all together in time. So let's start with the first phase of the cardiac cycle, which is atrial contraction. Now what you have to appreciate is that from a previous cycle, the AV valves are open, okay, which means that blood returning to the heart, either from the body here, or also returning from the pulmonary veins, they okay, are going to be coming into the atria, and because these valves are open, it will be passively filling into the ventricles. So now let's take a look at what's going on during this phase. The ECG, what we have is the P wave. Remembering that the P wave represents atrial depolarization. It's the electrical event that would have been because of the SA node firing, those autorhythmic cells, and then that electrical activity spreading through the conduction pathway over the atria. An electrical event is then going to lead to a mechanical event. In this case, it is going to be atrial contraction. As the atria contracts, what you would expect to have happen is that the atrial pressure would increase, and that is exactly what you can see right here. So as the heart is depolarized, it will then contract. So the atria is contracting. This is going to force the last bit of blood that's in the atria into the ventricle. Remembering that it was already passively filling, so 80% of the blood's already in the ventricle, this last little bit known as the atrial kick would, would put the last 20% into the ventricle. So now what you would expect to see in the volume of the ventricle would be that the volume would increase. Noting that at this point, that's the maximum amount of blood that's going to be in the ventricle for that particular cardiac cycle. Remembering that the maximum amount of blood is going to be called the end diastolic volume. That is the end diastolic volume because it's at the end of diastole. Okay, the ventricle is just about to contract, so it's at the very last stage of its diastole, maximum amount of blood, end diastolic volume. Note that during this period, the atria would be repolarizing and thus undergoing atrial relaxation. This is all included in the QRS complex. It's masked by the electrical activity of the ventricle and it's not actually indicated in a phase, but it would be occurring during the same time period as the ventricle systole. So let's continue on now looking at what, continue, what happens as the ventricle continues to contract. I want to take a closer look at what's happening with these pressure waves. Remembering that whenever the two waves cross, there's either going to be the opening or closing of a valve. So right here we have the ventricular pressure is now going to exceed the atrial pressure ventricular exceeding atrial. Okay, so what that means is that the AV valve is going to close. And because we're talking about the left side of the heart here, we're talking about the bicuspid valve. So the bicuspid valve now closes, and then take a look that the first heart sound, S1, is going to be heard due to the closing of that valve. I just want to point out this little change in the um, atrial pressure after the bicuspid valve closes. You know what I'm talking about is right here. So immediately after the AV valve closes, the bicuspid or tricuspid, you're going to see a little peak in the, an increase in the atrial pressure. Okay, this is known as the atrial pressure wave, and it's just due because the valves have closed so quickly, there's going to be a very brief increase in the pressure. Um, during which time the blood is hitting that valve. The next event in the ECG is the QRS 
complex, remembering that that represents ventricular depolarization. Electrical event is happening now. The uh, electrical activity through the cardiac conduction system has been slowed down at the AV node, giving the atria time to contract, and it is now spread through the um, AV bundle or the bundle of Hiss, through the bundle branches, and then through the Purkinje fibers. This, of course, is going to lead to the mechanical event of ventricular contraction. So what we would expect to see now is that there would be an increase in the ventricular pressure. And this is indeed what you're going to start to see following the QRS right there. The ventricular pressure is going to start to increase. Let's take a look at what phase of the cell cycle we're now in. It's called isovolumetric contraction. And what you have to appreciate is that these AV valves are now closed. What you haven't discussed already is that the semilunar valves, okay, were already closed from a previous cycle, and we'll see why that happens. But the main point here is that all four valves are closed. So the ventricle is starting to contract, okay, so it is a uh, um, systole. It's called isovolumetric because the blood is not going anywhere, okay? It can't leave the semilunar and it's not leaving the going back because the AV valves are closed. So again, the maximum amount of blood in the heart and diastolic volume, and this is isovolumetric contraction because there's going to be no change in the volume of the blood for that brief time. I just listened to this and realized I said the phase of the cell cycle. Of course, I meant the cardiac cycle. I'm teaching the cell cycle in biology 220, so I'm just getting confused. Note that the isovolumetric contraction phase is very short. You can see right here, it does not occur for very long. And that is because as the pressure in the ventricle is increasing due to systole, at this point right here, okay, the ventricular pressure will exceed the aortic pressure. And when that happens, the semilunar valve is going to open. And you can see right here that the aortic valve opens up and now we are in the stage of ventricular ejection because the blood that's in the ventricle will now be ejected into the aorta. So you can see here when that happens that the aortic pressure now is also going to start to increase. The two lines are kind of on top of each other there at this point. Um, the ventricular volume, you can see here, is now going to start to decrease because the blood is leaving the ventricle going into the aorta. Taking a look at the volume of blood in the ventricle, you can see that it has been decreasing because blood has been ejected from the ventricle going into the aorta. And now we have the minimum amount of blood that's going to be in the heart for any cardiac cycle. And this is known as the end systolic volume, and this represents the minimum amount of blood that is in the ventricle. The difference between the end diastolic volume and the end systolic volume is called the stroke volume, the amount of blood being pumped out um, per cardiac cycle, per, per beat. The next wave in the ECG is the T wave, which, remember, is ventricular repolarization. This is going to be followed by ventricular relaxation, and you will note here that the ventricular pressure is going to start to decrease as the ventricle undergoes diastole. Let's take a look at what happens as the ventricular pressure continues to decrease. At this point right here, you can see that the ventricular pressure is going to go below the aortic pressure. This is going to cause the semilunar valves to now close. And you can see here that the aortic valve closes, and that is going to be associated with S2, the second heart sound. As the uh, valve closes, you're going to then see what's called the dichrotic wave, okay, where there's going to be a slight increase in the aortic pressure, similar to what happened here when the bicuspid valve closes. If we examine the state of the valves now during this phase, we can see that the 
AV valves, okay, were previously closed when the ventricular pressure exceeded that of the atria. And now the semilunar valves have closed. So once again, all valves in the heart are closed, which means no blood is going to be leaving the ventricle. So once again, we have a state of isovolumetric, but in this case, it's going to be isovolumetric relaxation because the ventricle is in a state of diastole, it is repolarized, and it is relaxing. As the ventricular pressure continues to decrease, what you're going to have happen here is that at some point, it is actually going to go below the atrial pressure. So now we have ventricular pressure less than the atrial pressure, and we are going to have the, right here when it crosses, the AV, the bicuspid valve, is now going to open. When the AV valve opens, blood is now going to start to enter the ventricle. This is going to be the passive filling that we were previously discussing. So what you're going to now see is that the ventricular pressure will once again start to increase. Okay, and this is the phase of ventricular filling. So blood is returning from the lungs, blood is returning from the body, going into the left and right atria, and now the AV valves are opening, allowing blood to start to fill the ventricles, that passive filling 80% of the blood. Okay. Then we start and we're going to go back into the beginning of the cardiac cycle, where we will have atrial contraction, and that will kick the last little bit of blood into the ventricle, and we're starting all over again.